Welcome to the Recover Yourself Podcast, where we're bringing the conversation of recovering to into the conversation of recovering from. This week, we're doing a Dowcast with Sober Faust. So we're going to get right into that now. So tell me about where you're at right now. I'm in Portland, Oregon. We came out here to do a silent retreat, and then uh, we got an Airbnb for like the next four days. Why the retreat? Like, what's inspired that? Uh, we kind of did it spontaneously, but I know like we're really big on meditation. That's really what helps me quiet my mind. Mm-hmm. That's what helps me um, be more aware and not react to things and stay out of my head. So just anything that's like meditation related, like, like I'm always down to try just to yeah. see what I can get out of it. Because I know that everything's always within. So I love tapping into what's within because I always learn something and I love learning. So I'm always like, oh, that's why I do this. And that's why I do that. That's interesting. Who am I? You know, why do I do this? What's my purpose? So absolutely, absolutely. So the Tao Te Ching, are you familiar with the Tao? I've heard it a lot because I listen to Wayne Dyer and he always talks about that all the time. Well, beautiful. Well, this is gonna be this is gonna be super simple. Like, so yeah, do you got a you got a number between one and eighty one? Let's do, um, let's do 26. 26. Good. I'm going to read it because I think you're on a phone, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and read it to you. Um, the heavy is the root of the light. The unmoved is the source of all movement. Thus, the master travels all day without leaving home. Mm-hmm. However splendid the views, he stays serenely in herself. Why should the lord of a country flit about like a fool? If you let yourself be blown to and fro, you lose touch with your root. If you let restlessness move you, you lose touch with who you are. Mm. Man, that's good. That's powerful. That already sounds like, you know, meditation. You tap into who you are. Everything's within. Stay meek. You know, stay calm. You don't need to leave your house. You don't need to get anything externally to complete yourself. It's all within. And don't let, don't let like being restless and make a decision off of that, you know, tune into yourself, you know, that's what yeah. I am. So that's interesting. I want to, I want to just point out this idea that like you just went on a retreat, <laughs> right? Like, let's be real here for a second. Um, so you just went on a retreat. Like I, I, you know, I, so talk about that a little bit. If you have anything to say about it, I don't want to be like, so what does that mean? But, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing when it comes to leaving, why I do that, because I know everything's within. Yeah. is just to get away from like uh people that i know 100 percent. you know there's still distractions of work distractions of clients distractions of family so to get completely away from that then you can really look within even more you know like get rid of your identity of what you do for work uh you get your identity away from i'm a son i'm a brother you know um, i'm a friend <clears throat> so when it comes to like taking off I like that aspect of it because it really helps me tune into myself. And I'm so aware that I know throughout the trip, I always find something. Something's always there. And I go, that's that. That's what I've been looking for. There you go. And then I get to bring that back with me and then focus on those things when I come back to my, uh, my home. Right. Cause then, cause then what you're starting to do and, and like it says in this verse, however splendid the fuse, she stays serenely in herself. And, and why should the Lord of a country flit about like a fool? Now, when you're home, right, like the idea, and this is something that I've come across as well, where it's like when you're home and when you have labels that we're carrying, right? And when we go from one to the next to the next, it's, it's so, this is where in my mind, this is this whole idea of flitting about like a fool. Where are you in all this? We're defining ourselves by these external things, by my sister, right? My sister defines me as a brother. Her presence makes me define myself as a brother. But when I go out with my friends, then I'm defining myself as a friend. And now I'm not me, right? I am within these limits of something else. And that's why we leave, right? We leave to find a little bit more of ourself so that we can come back and be ourselves everywhere. Yep. So we don't have to be the brother. We can be us and we can speak our voice, not as the brother, mm-hmm. as the, you know, like as the, uh, as me, as God or whatever, right? Like as that higher power that is drawing me forward. So, well, 
that was good. Um, <laughs> if you let yourself be blown to and fro, you lose touch with your root. Like that's the same thing. It makes sense. It almost comes down to like people pleasing too, in a sense. Well, right. Because pleasing the people, being this person for this person, because I feel like that's what I'm supposed to do. So I don't know who I am. You, know, you have this idea of like, okay, I got to be a son right now. I got to act this way and that way. Oh, here's my sister. I got to act this way. I don't know who I am. You never get an opportunity to find out who I am. And we're so afraid of like, if I act who I am, will they accept me? But you'll never find out until you find out who you are and then bring that person back. Once you see everybody loves you still, you're like, oh, wow, this is great. Like, everybody loves me for me. And, like, that's the whole point of just loving everybody right there, you know? Love each other for who you are. Right. And the fear that comes up as soon as you say, what if I don't, what if I stop agreeing to the label that I've agreed to for 20 some odd years or 30 years or 40 years? I mean, I remember a big part of my issue with leaving my addictions was. I felt like it defined who I was, but it, it was taking from me everything that I was. Yeah. Like, uh, I know a big thing was like, uh, with me was when I did the step six and seven, it's like, well, I'm the funny guy. I'm the center of attention guy. I'm the guy that, um, knows it all. Those are my character. I thought I was that funny guy. I made funny videos in middle school. I mean, I was the, the class clown growing up, you know? And then, Slowly do I realize, like, oh, my gosh, none of that is me. That is me just – I don't want to be invisible. So these things gave me attention. They gave me people uh, talking to me throughout all this time. But it was so many years of this character that in recovery, I was like, wow, I have to let these go in order to really, you know, have serenity in my recovery. And, uh, like, you're right. It's, it's fearful. It's like, this is – okay, so this is really not me. I thought this was me the whole time. Okay, well, how do I let this go? Where do I even start? And I started to, uh, through my sponsor told me, just be meek. Just be meek. And I started practicing that every day. And then I started to find peace of mind. Yeah. And then all the relationships got better. I felt calmer. You know, um, I started to see more things happen in my life. And then I realized, like, wow, that fear, um, that fear I was creating in my life was a lie. I just had to let some things go. But not add things. I had to let things go of my character. and. Now I'm just like, dude, I walk around and I don't even have a thought sometimes throughout my day because oh. my mind's so quiet because I'm not acting out on things. I found out that all those character defects were creating it. So I'm always like, okay, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? Okay, okay, I got to do this. I got to do that. Oh my gosh, I don't know what he's talking about, but I got to pretend. Yeah, of course. Oh yeah. Now I'm lying and lying and lying. I'm like, why am I doing this? And, you know, always making jokes about things. I'm like, wow. I, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Though. And, and, you know, in all of that, right, like, that's flitting about like a fool, mm -hmm. right? Like, that is, like, literally embracing small labels of who we are, because we are so much more than that. And you came about this because you realized everything that you were, you were not. So, you mm -hmm. know, like, you, once you realize that, all you can do is find, like, where am I? Where am I in all of this? And then... In the last line of this, if you let restlessness move you, you lose touch with who you are. Mm -hmm. And I so like, and that was, and that was all that restlessness, right? For me, it was like, who am I going to be for someone else? And I couldn't, I couldn't just let it go and be. So yeah, so that's 26. Like, I thought that was really good for, for where we're at. Um, so yeah. It totally related to everything that's going on right now, which is cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I always believe, you know, synchronicity and everything happens for a reason. Oh, you know, yeah. it's just having, I always tell people, it's like, have that mindset in your recovery because if you don't, you will fail. It's, it's the perspective change of believing something that helps you get through those days, get, you know, the God shots or seeing how the universe loves you. And, you know, it creates faith. You're exercising faith because you start to look at everything like that, smallest things like that. And that's what makes recovery so like, uh, I don't know, just, just fun. Like I look at it like a blessed day. Like, thank you so much for the small thing. Having that mindset will get you through those rough times because life will still happen in your sobriety. You know, yeah, it's good. Right. You know, things will happen to you. No, it's going to happen. Have this mindset and you will get through it. If you don't have this mindset, I, I'm going to pray for you. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for, for, for joining me for this. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate you for having me on here too and contacting me. I want to thank Sober Faust for joining me on this downcast, and I want to thank you for listening. If you're having trouble with addiction, definitely go out and find help. There's plenty of places to do that, and we're all sitting here rooting for you. So I'm super excited because next week we're going to start doing interviews with people with long-term recovery. This has been an idea of mine for a long time, and I'm finally getting it off the ground. So keep an eye out next Sunday when we launch longer format uh, interviews with people in long-term recovery that, have, that understand what I'm talking about when we, when we talk recover yourself. So that's going to be really exciting. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. And until then, keep recovering yourself.